Welcome to Tuesday of the Passion Week. On Monday, you remember Jesus cleansed the temple, and the Gospel writers tell us that He essentially took control of the Temple Mount. He wasn't allowing anyone to carry goods through. And so He basically, for Monday and Tuesday of the Passion Week, commandeers the entire Temple Mount and takes control of it again as its rightful owner. On Tuesday morning, he and his disciples leave Bethany just over the Mount of Olives, two miles from the Temple Mount, and they return again that morning to the Temple. And the Gospel writers tell us that it becomes a day of teaching. Jesus is there on the Temple Mount, that huge 35-acre area where the Temple stood. Uh, somewhere between 200, 300,000 pilgrims were likely there for the Passover week, and uh, so there would have been tens of thousands of people milling about on the top of the Temple Mount. And on Tuesday, Jesus begins to teach. And in the context of his teaching, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are hanging around in the background listening to Jesus' teaching, looking for ways to trap him. And uh, in response to his teaching, they question his authority. By what authority, they say, do you do these things? Probably a reference to his having cleansed the temple, to his having run out the money changers, and now his teaching, as well as, of course, the events of the triumphal entry. By what authority? And Jesus, knowing that they have no intention of responding to him and to his authority, asked them why they didn't respond to John the Baptist. Was he, in fact, from heaven, or was he speaking merely from men? They realize they can't answer that question without finding themselves in a trap. If he's from heaven, why didn't you listen to him? And if he's from men, they're going to find themselves in serious trouble with the people who all believe that he was a genuine prophet. And so they don't answer, and so Jesus doesn't answer. He's essentially saying, look, you're, you're not going to respond to my authority. The Father has already manifested that in so many ways. And so if you refuse to hear me, then there's no need for me to give you any further answer to your questions. So then in response to that, Jesus tells three parables. And those parables are an indictment of Israel's leaders. You have, first of all, the parable of the two sons, in which he essentially indicts them for having refused to listen to God's will, as explained by John the Baptist. And then you have the parable of the vineyard, which he indicts them for having rejected as a people the prophets God sent. And uh, he details how they have treated the prophets, and then specifically how they have treated God's only son. In the parable of the vineyard, the father says, I will send my son, surely they will respect him. And of course, they determine that their only solution is to put the son to death. And Jesus is essentially indicting them because some six weeks before, after the raising of Lazarus, that is exactly what the Sanhedrin had concluded. And then Jesus tells the parable of the, of the wedding feast in which he indicts them for having rejected the invitation of salvation offered through him from the Father. And so there are these parables that confront them right there on the Temple Mount in the middle of everyone they in turn respond with a series of questions, trying to undermine him, trying to trick, trip him and, and trap him in some way where they can, they can rightfully accuse him, arrest him, and even put him to death. And of course, he responds with profound wisdom to each of those questions. You'll read about them in today's reading. From there, Jesus launches into an indictment of the Pharisees and you'll read about the woes he pronounces on them for their apparent spirituality, which was utterly and completely devoid of any real heart for God. On the heels of that, Jesus walks across the Temple Mount and goes into the court of the women where the receptacles for the offering for the temple were, and he watches a poor widow put her two mites into the offering, and it's all that she had to live on. The story is not 
rightly understood most of the time. This is not a story about you should follow this widow's example. In fact, the Gospels are clear on the heels of this. Um, Jesus pronounces the destruction of the temple, but prior to the widow's might, he has just indicted the Pharisees for devouring widows' houses. He walks across the Temple Mount, he watches this poor woman put in all she has to live on, and then he totally renounces a system that preys on the, the needy like this poor widow. And so he walks out of the temple, never to come back into it during his earthly ministry. He ascends up the Mount of Olives, and there on the Mount of Olives, looking back across the valley, the Kidron Valley, back to the Temple Mount, he delivers the Olivet Discourse, in which he explains the future, specifically the destruction that's coming on the city of Jerusalem, as well as all the events that will unfold all the way to the end of time and to his second coming. It's really a remarkable day, Tuesday, in the life and ministry of our Lord. Enjoy the readings for today.